Well, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And congratulations on the uh, new job title. How does that feel? It's great. You know, it's something I worked for my whole life to get to this, this role. So a little bit of my background, I worked in every single aspect of the marketing team before taking on this role. So even starting at the entry level and all of the senior manager levels. So I'm not new to Infinity. I've spent my entire adult life loving this brand and working on this brand. And now I get to lead this brand. Right, well, and for those who didn't hear Tanya say, it's Director of Marketing Communications and Media. I right. didn't want to leave that out. But, and as you said, you've been with Affinity now, Infinity for uh, over 12 years. You've gone through the ranks of different things, predominantly marketing, but yeah. you've um, been a part of the brand side of things. And um, talk about that and how all of that experience and what you've done. Are we... I do not He's know. He's excited about Infinity too. <laughs> yeah. <Yay> Infinity. <laughs> um, so talk about just how that, and, and I, going back even to a little bit what um, like uh, KG have been talking about and everyone, just women in automotive. And then I know that's obviously influencing how you're designing cars, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But just coming through the ranks and as a woman now in the opposition, how is that, you know, evolved for you, and then how has that sort of influenced how you're doing your marketing today in this position? Absolutely. Obviously, it's very important to me. I also have a 13-year-old daughter, and I want her to see a different kind of future than maybe we would have seen in the past, where, you know, we are, we do have a seat at the table. We do have a loud voice. What's really great about this brand is I've always been surrounded by great mentors, great sponsors, very smart people, regardless of gender. So it's, it's a really good brand. And if you meet any of us, we all truly love the brand. We truly work together. We say we're a family. We're close. Um, and we always have supported each other. Well, and as you said, when you go into it, Ford working in the different departments, getting more on the marketing side of things now, and seeing how the different areas work. And now in the position you are where you're overseeing it all, so you have much more of a voice there, but how has the other, by being in, in each area a little bit more directly, influenced you now in terms of how you lead the team? Absolutely, I'm very empathetic. You know, I've worked on the creative side. I know, I know all of the blood, sweat, and tears that go into making a campaign, a lot of the agencies here. I've been on the media side of buying and, and really making sure we're hitting our right target customer. What's really interesting, and I'm kind of a secret nerd when it comes to this, I built the business intelligence and marketing strategy team. We had an in-house data scientist, so we got to really dig into maybe the less sexier side of marketing, <laughs> but equally as important to make sure we have the right data and insights that drive our business forward. And it's great being empathetic and knowing the challenges that my team face, but, but now I really need to step back and empower them in making sure that they can also make decisions I can give them my leadership, my guidance, my vision, but, but I have a very strong team and I have to make sure that they can grow through the ranks too of, you know, maybe there's someone on my team that sees this as their job in the future. How can I help them get there? Right. And well, so now on the marketing side of it, so that's working internally, but how then, what have you learned in terms of, I mean, consumers are changing. Obviously the world has evolved a lot, especially the last couple of years, but how does that direct you as the overall, you know, marketing and getting that brand voice out there? Uh, making sure we're staying true to who we are. We're human, we're daring, we're forward, we're a challenger brand, and to stay true to that no matter what, and consistently show up there. And what's important for me is to make sure we understand our customer. If we truly are human, what are we doing for them? What insights can we glean from them? Uh, the agency just recently pulled all of these stats together for uh, the QX60, our all new QX60. And this is a female CEO, entrepreneur. She may not love the automotive category, you know, unlike all of us here. <laughs> so we had to find a different way to reach her and, and an authentic way to reach her. But it's digging into those data points and making sure we're showing up in the right places. Well, and talk about that. I mean, I sort of uh, let, said a little bit about it earlier when we first were started to talk that women are changing in terms of their positions and they're now influencing in a lot of ways how you market and in particular for you a more you know luxury mm -hmm. vehicle how does that influence you how does that change in the sense that you know maybe was it for more predominantly towards a man or was it just not you know sort of just gender inclusive and not really think of it that way how is you now directing it differently to sort of reach women today 
Absolutely, especially with the QX60. It is built for, for a, an entrepreneur, a mother. Um, she has to you know, run people around and she has to use this vehicle as part of her life. But she doesn't want to lose part of who she is. It's stylishly designed. You're proud to drive it. You're proud to show your friends this vehicle. And we have to make sure that shows up in our advertising. You know, we have very real moments. Um, our brand is, you know, luxury should be lived in. We don't, you know, not putting ourselves on a pedestal, but showing up in these real, true human moments. And sometimes it can be chaotic, but it's, it's chaotic by design. And you'll see that come through authentically in all of our creative launch work. Well, and I have to say, I know that you did, um, you did a partnership with Waze. Okay, before, and they may have changed. This was maybe four or five years ago. I used Waze to get to, I, used, I was an entertainment reporter, and I was going to the Grammys, and I put it on to get me there, and I'm on the 10, and it's directing me, oh, you can get around this traffic. All right, so I'm fairly dressed up. I'm brought to a very sketchy neighborhood, and it dead ends me. So in my head, I was like, I'd watched movies before where the, you know, someone overtook your <laughs> GPS and then they're going to come kill you. Right. So I immediately turned up ways. I have to say that. No. <laughs> so obviously now, and I know I've talked with other people and they said it's completely changed because they vouch, you know, they, everyone is just like thinks, oh, you need to use that, especially to get around in L.A. and uh -huh. other places. So talk about that said, I don't mean to put a negative spin on this question. This is great. <laughs> That's just been my last one. Yeah. But anyway, talk about, let's give Waze now a heads. Yes. Come back <laughs> thumbs to up. Waze. Come back to Waze. Talk about your partnership. I, I think you'll why. enjoy it. So uh, I always laugh. Our, our PR head is here, Kyle. We you know, both have about a 12-minute uh, drive to work, and we both use Waze to get to work because it does take you around you know, heavy traffic. It was a natural integration for us. So when it came across you know, my desk, I thought this, this is a no-brainer. Um, it was in support of International Women's Day, and it lasted the entire month of March. But when you opened the app, you could turn your avatar into the QX60, so naturally integrated with our product. Um, and then we highlighted either female-owned businesses or um, historical female sites. So you could learn more. It just brings awareness to women that, that were, you know, paved the way for us to where we are now. And then women-owned businesses, which are so important to communities and, and if, if someone could find a new place to shop or learn something on their drive, I think it's great. I, I likened before that, you know, I have a 13 year old, like how great for her to drive in the car and, and hear these things and see these things and of course stop and say, let's shop here. <laughs> and, and maybe there's places that, that these women might not have had awareness for their, their business before. So it was a great integration and it really did tie it back to the car, how you use the car, a human moment to make life a little easier. And I'm curious, because a lot of it, you know, you are, and again, it's, this particular brand is now, or this particular model is very geared towards women. So I understand that. But is that something that you have also feel needs to, to be done, not just even for this particular um, car, but also for anything in terms, sort of targeting women a little bit more? Is that, you know, a, a part of reaching a wider audience and being more specific to women? Are they now shopping more for cars and shopping more for vehicles? I sure hope so. And if there's anything I could do, it's to make that more seamless experience for them, make it easier, and really to bring our personality to life for them. It is important. It doesn't just have to be a QX60. You know, as I said before, it's more than a mom. We have a whole lineup of vehicles. Uh, I personally worked on the life product of the sedans, so the Q50 as well. I love it. Um, we know that a lot of women are interested in that as well. So I, I don't think that we have to you know, walk away from that. We probably should do a better job of making sure that we're bringing it to life for all genders. Yes, definitely. Um, I believe we have a spot to show. And well, let's watch it first, and then we'll talk about it. Introducing the all-new Infiniti QX60. Take on life in style. When I first saw this, um, I thought it was going in such a different direction, when, <clears throat> not just now on, on TV. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's her 
ex escape from the, you know, the kids and everything. So I thought that was great. So talk about that and creating that particular campaign. Absolutely. It's a very human moment, right? Uh, I said before, I'm a mom, and sometimes I need a minute, and that's okay. And, and it's really too true to our brand. We're not putting ourselves on a pedestal. It doesn't have to be perfect. You have these life moments that, by design, are not, and that's okay. And it's just a really interesting way to tie the kids, which are very important to the vehicle purchase as well, the whole family, and the mother and her experiencing this moment with her kids. Well, and it's also, it's going away from that, you know, the when people were first getting the SUV, and it was just sort of like the mom vehicle, and no one, you know, at first that was cool or fun, and then it became almost an embarrassment, I'm not gonna get the SUV. This is completely, it's giving you what the SUV does, but it's totally representing it, and the messaging into it is very different. Talk about that in terms of, was that, <coughs> obviously it was strategic in doing that, but what led to that? What were you finding? We Were there a backlash from, that family SUV, and so now you had to sort of upgrade it a bit? You know, what we really leaned into, and it was really in the product design that, you know, you don't want to lose your personality because you're a mom. You have to buy the QX60 because you need to put people in it. You need to put things in it. But this person, the person that buys it, is still an individual. And, you know, the car is beautiful. I don't know if you've seen it. It has beautiful designs. You'd be proud to drive it, proud to take your friends around in it, take it out for the night. And it was designed for that, for all the aspects of not, you know, not just mom shuttling kids or it's going out with your friends or going out on a date night. It's the kind of car you want to feel really good doing it. And we took that into this in the development of the spot. And, well, I know um, this, now this is going to be at the show, correct? Are it you, is. It's what, here. Are you... You're doing a lot with, talk, well, just talk about how you're showing it off. I mean, you said about the design of it, but also with AR and yes. all different techniques and our little gadgets. Talk about that a little of bit. Course. You know, you always have to evolve of how do you bring this car to life, especially when it's on the floor, right? So we wanted to make sure that the auto show felt more than just like a showroom. How can we bring this to life? How can we interact with the vehicle? So if you walk up to the vehicle, and I hope you all come by the booth, <laughs> there's a QR code on the bottom, and you can go and interact with different aspects of the vehicle. So what is the most, I mean, because AR, obviously, you know, in marketing especially, but also with cars, with, with I always say cars, and I know it's not cars anymore. <laughs> it's so vehicles. there's so many vehicles, <laughs> but with vehicles, it's always that next Thing. You know, whatever it may be that's cool and you can talk to it or it's, it, it, you know, you open the window by saying it or you don't have to hold, you know, it stares for you. I mean, there's so much of that. Um, people are looking for all those little bells and whistles. Talk about how important that is. And then also when you're showing them off in a car, in an auto show like this, that must be a really a way to sort of draw the crowd to you. Absolutely. And, and once you get in the vehicle and you experience it, you can see how it fits into your life. You know, and, and this car is no different. If you get into it, it has massaging seats, which is lovely. <laughs> so you saw the moment, the mom is taking a moment, you can get in there. It's very relaxing, it, it's built for you. Uh, there's tons of charging ports in the car, which is great. Uh, for me, I usually have a car full of 13 year olds and they're all on TikTok. So all of their phones are always dead. So we have to make sure that we're being able to charge it, but it, it's humanizing the vehicle, getting in and experiencing it and see how it can fit in your life. How important is it still, I know that that's kind of gone back and forth, to be a part of the auto show, you know, in terms of where things are being more virtual or th people are having a lot more um, experiential moments, you know, brands are now having their own th places where they can then introduce people to the car. But how important still is coming to like the New York Auto Show and being a part of this? Yeah, the New York Auto Show is so important to us. And I think it was a good moment of walking in today and thinking, we're back. This is great. It's all so nice to be together. And I think it's something you want to take for granted anymore. Um, and experiential events are very important. You know, like I said, once you get in and you can experience the car, it's very different than just seeing it. So whether it's auto shows, we also have an experiential tour where we're taking the QX60 to 10 different cities in the U.S., uh, like I said, our, our target customer may not always be a category lover, so we're taking the car to where, where she is and where she experienced her life so she can get in and, and, and really love the car as much as we do. Well, and so, and again, keeping with strong women and really targeting them with Kate Hudson. Yes. Another, and she, it's, I'm curious <laughs> why, for choosing Kate Hudson that's for the QX60, because um, she is, she's I mean, obviously beautiful, beautiful and she's smart, very quirky, uh, just a, her own person. So 
obviously that has to have been very purposeful for you guys to choose someone like her. What were you looking for and how did she fit it? Very authentic. So anytime you work with a brand influencer or a celebrity, you should make sure that their values align with your values. And, and Kate's a busy mom. She does it. She's very stylish the way she does it, but she's also an entrepreneur. She has her own businesses. And that was important for us to make sure that we're tying this car to someone like her because you really are personifying the vehicle, the brand with anybody that you work with. Whether it's a celebrity or an influencer, you should make sure that you're both aligned. And she was perfect for us. And it's kind of great that she's quirky because as you can see, we're not aiming for perfection here. Uh, we're not putting anybody on a pedestal. We're human, we're having human moments. And I think that's really important that we lean into that. Well, yeah, and I agree. I mean, and, and quirky was probably, I mean, she is quirky, but more she's, I think what you said, authentic or honest, she's someone who would be, you know, you'd see her running out with bunny slippers on after she, you know, like, cause her kid forgot the lunch and she had to run out, you know, and didn't think she'd be out. And so, and with that spot that you just showed, it was very similar where she was just sort of relaxing and taking her moment. Yeah. Um, when you do work with an influencer like her, and, and obviously she's more sponsorship in this, or being, representing you guys, but is there a, do you, how do you, and, not just by aligning them with your values, but getting them involved more, like really leveraging them to get the most out of that kind of partnership. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we did another partnership with Aaron Andrews, and it's a whole campaign, which you'll see more of, called Unscripted. And we, we gave her the QX60, and, and she went out and she did a review in her own words, which I think is really authentic, and it's the right thing to do for our customer. You know, as I said, they may not always love, you know, in-depth automotive reviews of torque and things like that, you know, but she's bringing it to life for the customer that they, they want to bring it to life. And I think that's really important for us when we do these types of things. Um, and, and that, the Aaron Andrews was actually a social campaign. We initially, we were only going to run it on the social media channels, and we loved it so much, we turned it into a broadcast spot. So normally you see the opposite happen of, right, there's something really interesting here. And the agency did a good job of extending beyond that of, okay, what more can we do? And so now we have a whole influencer series where we're giving the vehicles for ex extended period of time for them to go and see how it fits in their life and show their fans, their followers, how it fits in their life. And, and they might align with that as well. well and choosing influencers, because I think at this point, if any marketer knows an influencer is now a necessary yes. <laughs> uh, part of your campaign. But initially, people were paying for them and just you know grabbing it. Any who has the most following, who has the you know is going to give us the most um, exposure, and that's really backfired a lot. And it mm -hmm. it's obviously sounds like that's not what you're looking for. So when you're finding these you know more and more influencers trying to get involved, how are you selecting them? How are you? What are you sort of? Are you do you send them questions? Do you just follow them a bit and see where they're, where they're like you? What, what do you do for yeah, that? We, we pair with a company that helps us identify who will, who will work with us. The agency does a great job of vetting them um, just to make sure we're not, we could over KPI things, right, where we could chase likes so we could chase things like that. That's not what we're trying to do. Um, that would be inauthentic to who we are. So there's a whole um, strategy, influencer strategy that we have and a checklist to make sure that their values are aligning with our values. Um, and there's times too, and I know Allison mentioned this before, and with Kate, sometimes they interview us back because it has to be right for them too. You know, where, where Kate was really big into what our future products were going to look like and spent a lot of time to make sure that it, it aligned with her brand as well. And f in terms of also when you're saying same values, what are the core values that you're looking for? I mean, we just um, heard with Russell talking about how they're very much a part of wanting to give back and to mm -hmm. really you know, add to the community, whether it be for animals or um, helping when during COVID. What are the, what are you guys looking to do? What do you want to be seen as? So then that's the kind of influencer you're going to be looking for. Absolutely. So a few different pillars that we put through, we're human, we're daring, we're forward. So even when we're making the vehicles themselves, it starts there. So then marketing can amplify it from there. So those three pillars are what we're really looking at. And we're a challenger brand. We're not the biggest brand and that's okay. This is the vehicles we want. This is the brand we want to be. And we have to make sure that our influencers align with those. And you mentioned, and I don't want to go dive deep into it or anything, but you did say about the KPIs and not going for the following. But when you are going with a, you know, whether it's a Kate Hudson or um, going with different influencers, what are you, what are your your 
what's showing you that it's working? What are you looking for? Yeah, uh, this is where I have the whole in-house data scientist. So we have a ton of KPI. I can show you some dashboards. Um, we're, we have no lack of data, but really awareness and familiarity is what we're trying to work on when it, we come to influencers because you know they're, they're lending their credibility to our vehicle and making sure people understand this. And then we have a ton of post-market reviews to go back of people, did it, people identify your brand? Um, did it help grow your brand? And then there's things like website traffic and foot traffic and things like that. That get really granular, <laughs> but when you're doing let's a really big campaign, <laughs> yeah, let's get real. No, we I'm, have a ton of that. <laughs> I'm very much a reporter, so okay. I couldn't get deep and into like it even if data. you wanted to. <laughs> no. So, well, talk about you have. I know you have other activations coming up. Talk about any of that, or what? Just what do you have planned? for 2022? Yeah, 2022 is a big year for us. We have two main goals, and it's to clarify the brand. You'll see all that come to life of who we are, who our personality is, to making, make sure everybody knows that we're a strong brand and what we stand for. So the back half of the year, you'll see a lot of brand campaign. I know Allison Witherspoon, you heard her talk about that earlier, of how important the branding is. And you'll see us lean heavily into that in our brand personality showing. And then to be the easiest luxury OEM to do business with. So while I have the creative and I, I have the media, that's you know the real fun part of marketing, I also have e-commerce that's under our team. So it's really important that we're developing tools that our customers want to interact with when purchasing a vehicle. Uh, we're actually doing a ton of consumer research right now. They came back with hundreds of ideas. So we want to make sure we're building what our customers want and not necessarily just what we want. Well, and that's totally key, especially um, obviously this past couple of years, e-commerce for, you wouldn't have thought you'd talk that much about it at an auto show, but right. really it's become huge. Yeah. And people just want to even buy online, which is amazing to me. Right. So how, what are the, you, you say you're developing tools, but what are co consumers most looking for and that you're really being able to kind of put together for them so you can reach them the way they need to be? Yeah, the seamless experience and it's, it's giving them what they need when they need it. You know, there's still a really important role for a retailer, but how can we make it easier before it gets to the retailer? Um, everything they can learn about the car, even personalization when you come to the website, you know, we make sure that the right vehicle shows up that you're interested in. And then with the e-commerce tool, we all had to pivot pretty quickly with the, with the onset of the pandemic to make sure um, we could help our, our retailers to still do business. And that really was the catalyst for us. We moved pretty quickly. Um, and now we have about 80% of our retailers enrolled in it. Uh, and it's think about how you want to buy. Uh, if something doesn't get to you in two days, you're probably not going to buy it. So we all, you know, we go to Amazon, we purchase things. It's easy for us to do. So we think about that. What's what's right for our customer? What's the easy thing for our customer to make sure we are the easiest luxury OEM to do business with? Are you? I don't want to go a lot into it, but are you seeing that it's people are still wanting to do it uh, through online? Like, is that yeah. has that gone down a little bit? I mean, maybe a little bit, but. It's, it's going to be consistent. People have changed, and this is the way of the world, I guess, from moving forward. Yeah, it, right now, it is. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and there's still an integral part for the retailer because they have the relationship with the customer. So we want to just make it easy to get to the retailer. And then once they purchase a car, we're not done there. You know, we have to make sure that they have a great experience with us after they buy the car. Well, I know I want to open it up for you guys to ask questions, but I always like to kind of end it. What... What did you find that, what had surprised you the most? Like this past year, six months, I mean, obviously, and hey, you just started <laughs> with your new position earlier on this year. So even yeah. from the beginning of that, that you learned something or whatever that really surprised you that you found really valuable moving forward now? Well, you know, just that we always have to pivot. We always have to listen. Uh, we're in the midst of a huge launch. We have another campaign coming out. But it's really the music that, that you'll start to see Infinity. It's bringing our personality to life. We, we've done a few ads recently where we have stellar music. Some of it, you know, I, I heard on my daughter when she's watching TikTok. And I'm like, I know that song. <laughs> so it's leaning into that and the personality. And our, our goal this year is to make sure everybody understands who we are and how we show up. Great. Tanya wants to... Yeah, I've got a question, actually. Is is uh, Aaron, An or will we see Aaron Andrews or Kate Hudson again, or were they just one-offs? Uh, hopefully not, yeah. They were great to work with. So, you know, we're, we're actually in the midst of developing our year right now um, and what that looks like. We know we want to do a branded campaign, so always looking at who's the right person to, to work with that. But they were both great to work with. Yeah, they seemed like they were mm -hmm. into it. So yeah. any questions from the audience? I've got one more question. Um, the... You guys had an experiential event a couple years ago at Concor, De Legance in Pebble Beach. Do you, do you think experiential is a good way to go in terms of getting butts in seats and 
you know, getting always important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and once you experience our vehicle, I think it, it's a mind changer, right? For once you get in it, it's great. Um, we're all, always evaluating experiential. We, you know, we're here at the auto show. We're bringing it to life. If you go, we have these sound booths where it's a kind of quiet respite. Um, and then we have our 10 city tour that we're kicking off right now where we are taking the car to our target customer. So continuing to evaluate it and, and making sure we're showing up in the right places. Awesome. Well, I don't think we have any more questions, so thank you so thank much. You. It was a wonderful Q&A.